I had last Sunday somebody laughed at me in his church and called me a thief and called me a rat claiming to give birth to an elephant <laughs> and he said that they are from the generation of giants and he forgot that it's a small David that killed a giant Goliath no my damn thief he said somebody way big pass you now you're picking <laughs> okay John the Baptist was the one who baptized Jesus is it because of Jesus Okay, you ordained the man, but the man don't think about you. <laughs> As a man of God who's heavily jealous of his boy under him. When I see him preaching, I say, This man has gone into bitterness. Many of you don't know. That man was at the top. But he sees small boys rise up, so the thing he can't stand it. Then the video went out within the week, and he discovered that the person he's calling a giant actually was given birth to by the rat. And now they are quiet. Because they don't know which other videos are lined up to be released. The reason why we release the video is because they say I was lying. And it's important for me as a leader to show that I was not lying. So we give them small evidence so that they can see that we are not lying. 1997, we were there training those giants how to pray. 1997, the video is in circulation. And we have more evidence. I'm just waiting. Let them just come out again. Then they will see fire some of them say i abuse fathers but them that are talking when i started preaching they were not born again so i'm a father to them when it comes to ministry but they're abusing me rat they are calling me rat no problem we will not deal with the abuse let's deal with the matter they said that is a shame that they brag about houses they brag about ministerial success to be congregation size to be cars estates money and they say because they have all of that me i don't have that i'm a failure and there is success so their definition of ministerial success is based on material acquisition and they forget that jesus said beware of covetousness a man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses i feel like i'm teaching now a man is not defined by car and house and money and clothes you know the disciples of jesus who we are copying in ministry today did not brag about cars did not brag about jets did not brag about houses did not even brag about the sizes of their congregation the only thing they brag about was christ christ is our treasure that is what we have and if a man of god who is supposed to be happy that he has jesus is not satisfied with jesus is defining himself by car and house and money and all of that he is too carnal for anybody to model him he is far from the truth of the gospel and he's a bad model for ministers of the gospel luke 12 15. and he said unto them take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses give me the message of that luke chapter 12. Speaking to the people, he went on, Take care, protect yourself against the least bit of greed. Life is not defined by what you have, even when you have a lot. Disciples of Jesus did not brag about what they had. Look at what their joy was. Acts chapter 5 verse 41. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. What shame? They were persecuted for preaching Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, brother. I'm not ashamed of it. Cars don't define us. Sizes of congregation don't define us. Is it good to have a crowd? If the crowd know what they are doing, it's a good thing. But sizes of congregation don't define us. Otherwise, Jesus was a failure. Because in one day, thousands left him. Paul, at the end of his ministry, everybody forsook him. But yet he says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the course. And there's a crown of righteousness kept for me by the Lord Jesus. So crowd don't define us. Shoes don't define us. Cars don't define us. Estates don't define us. Listen carefully. That is what Satan offered to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 4. He offered to him houses and cars. And Jesus rebuked him. And what Jesus turned down is what preachers today are flaunting as ministerial success. You can tell where the church is exactly. In first Timothy chapter 6 verse 3 look at it if any man teach otherwise and consents not to wholesome words even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness anybody that plays down on the doctrine of Christ next verse he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strifes of words whereof cometh envy strife railings evil surmisings he is proud knowing nothing next verse verse 5 Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. From such pastors, withdraw yourself. Don't listen to them. They have nothing to offer you. Other than greed, avarice, 
and the doctrine of Balaam, which actually is measuring a man's value by material things. He said, destitute of the truth. Look, give me the message of that verse 5. Eventually, there's an epidemic of backstabbing and truth is but a distant memory. They think religion is a way to make a fast buck. So they are using their Bible to be making money. You know what I'm talking about. And then they now say, don't mind Damina. Damina is full of bitterness. Damina is envious. Me, envious of what? The template you people are using for your materialistic gospel, some of the template, I'm the one that gave to you people. What is there to envy? Envy lying to people in the name of the Bible and collecting their money. Lying to them that if they don't pay tithe, they will not go to heaven. Lying to them that the size of your giving determines the weight of your greatness. Lying to them that you must pay tithe 50 years in advance. Lying to them that if you give to the poor, you will be like the poor. Is that what I'm envying? Or envying, arranging miracles, crutches and wheelchairs all brand new, which we don't see anymore. Is that what I'm envious of? There's nothing there to envy. I am satisfied with Jesus. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. And can somebody shout glory? The Bible in the book of, of, of 2 Corinthians 10, 12 says, they comparing themselves with themselves, they are not wise. In 1 Corinthians 4, 5, it says, judge nothing before the time. It's too early now to be saying, this is a great man of God. This is the biggest man of God. It's too early. Judge nothing before the time. We are still in the journey of ministry. And one day we will see Jesus. Then shall we know which man is the great man of God. But those of you that are comparing themselves by the sizes of your congregation, Bible says you're not wise. You're foolish. And I don't want to model after a foolish man. Give me that first Corinthians 4 5 as I close this service. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Give me message. So don't get ahead of the master and jump to conclusions with your judgments before all the evidence is in. When he comes, he will bring out in the open and place in evidence all kinds of things we never even dreamed of in our motives and purposes and prayers. Only then will any one of us get to hear the well done of God. Is it getting clear here? It's too early right now to be saying that's the biggest man. Biggest this, biggest that. What's your yardstick for judgment? Are you Jesus the judge? Give me NLT of that same verse. So don't make judgments about anyone ahead of time before the Lord returns. For he will bring our darkest secrets to light and will reveal our private motives. Then God will give to each one whatever praise is due. God is the one that will give each one whatever praise is due. It's too early for any preacher. And those of you that are using money to define preachers, you are more carnal than the devil. More carnal. You don't even know anything. You are far. You are destitute of the truth. You are far from God. The true word of a man of God is not crowd and size. It's the message. The message. And brother, if you don't know the message, you are a clown on the pulpit. Stand on your feet. Let's close your eyes.